Howdy gang and welcome back to Pool School. In today's very short episode, I'm gonna teach you how to test and adjust the pH of your pool. So what do you say we get started? Alrighty, before we dive right in, I wanna thank you again for watching this video. Remind you to like it if you do. Subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already, and please share my channel with everyone you know who owns a pool so they can save a ton of money taking care of their own pool themselves. Alrighty, well, it is the middle of June, and it is hot. It's typical for Arizona. Today's temperature, wait for it, 117 degrees. So, obviously, I'm going to stay covered with my awesome hat from Sunday afternoon and if you want to get one like this I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video below so you can check it out and uh, They make great hats and uh, I did a contest a while ago about those But they were great hats and this is when they really come in handy also do not forget to check out my new membership website poolschooler.com. It's going to come across the bottom of the screen, poolschooler.com. Check it out. It's an ex There's a lot of exclusive content on there, including a bunch of great checklists for your specific type of pool and sanitation system in it, and all kinds of other perks, including product links and the products that I use myself for my clients, and a bunch of other stuff. Plus, it gives you priority access to me for questions. I get so many questions nowadays and emails and, and my comments and emails that it's really hard to keep up with them. Sometimes it takes me up to a month to get back in touch with somebody, but my membership website allows you to reach out to me through chat and I usually respond within 24 to 48 hours. So check that out as well. Okay, so this is a very short uh, video on how to test the pH of your pool and how to adjust it. It's really quite easy to do. Uh, I use test strips and the test strips that I use, I'm gonna pull them out right now. I use the AquaCheck Pros and we've talked about this before. The reason I use the AquaCheck Pros is because I go through them so fast and these are cheaper for my weekly service. But for all my, my pool school people and poolschooler.com people, I recommend the AquaCheck 7s. Can you see that? These are the ones that I recommend because you only have to buy one tube of them. There's a hundred of them in here. So if you're testing your pools on a weekly basis, you're testing for chlorine, pH, alkalinity. And so these are better than running two different tubes because these will last you well over a year if you test once a week. But again, I'm going to show you how to use this test strip, the AquaCheck 7, to test the pH of your pool and then teach you and tell you how to adjust it either up or down without totally messing with the alkalinity. So what do you say we find a pool and get to it? Alrighty, so I'm here at one of my client's pools and I have my AquaCheck 7 test strips. Just really quick, these are very easy to use. If you haven't seen my video on testing your pool water, I'm going to put a link in the description of this video below so that you can watch that video. It's a really, really good video. But again, this is the AquaCheck 7s, and what I'm testing for today is pH. It's this one right here, just above my thumb, and I'm looking for a range, an ideal range of between 7.2 and 7.3. I'm sorry, 7.8 as my, I'm gonna double check that because my eyes are not the best in the world now. Yeah, 7.8, so between 7.2 and 7.8 is my ideal range. So, shows me how to hold the strip, and I'm gonna test it right now. All righty, I'm gonna dip my strip down into the pool. Remember, I'm not gonna shake it. it. Takes about 15 seconds or so, but I'm gonna hold this up against my little measuring device here. And if you notice, that I'm reading right in between 7.2 and 7.8 as far as my pH. So this pool is pretty good to go and I don't really need to add anything more. Now in Arizona, typically, if our pH is a certain level, the alkalinity is gonna be similar too. That's just in Arizona, I know, or in my area, I know that other people have commented and said, hey, my pH is high and my alkalinity is low. And again, if you haven't seen my video on the separate ones on adjusting the pH and the other one on adjusting alkalinity, I'll put the vid uh, link to those videos in the description below as well. So you can see how to adjust your pH or alkalinity separately from the other, okay? But again, this one is fine, but I'm gonna tell you what happens if it's low or if it's high, the pH that is. 
Alrighty, so I'm at my truck and I wanted to come back here and show you what I add to the pool if the pH is low or high, okay? This is again, just to adjust the pH without really affecting the alkalinity too much. If my pH is low, okay, that means that the water is very acidic, all right? So what I have to do is try to neutralize that acid, okay? And uric acid, which is P, sorry, is acid and it can raise, it can lower the pH of your pool. So if your pH is low, you're gonna add soda ash, okay? Soda ash is going to neutralize the acidity or the acid and raise the pH. I use a scoop like this, okay? These are hard to get now, I haven't found them lately, but I know that you can find scoops like this. I add one pound of soda ash, and I put this in this tub that was already cleared out. It used to hold another chemical, and I cleared it out really good and washed it out really well, and I put my soda ash in there. It typically comes in a bag if you get a 50 pounder, or you can get probably like 10 pounders or whatever. Just look up soda ash, pool soda ash, and I just take a scoop of this, and I walk around the perimeter of the pool and distribute it, and it's gonna get cloudy, and that's okay. And then I make sure that at any time I add chemicals, unless otherwise noted, I run the system or the pool pump so that it helps disperse and mix in the chemicals quicker. So after you add this, I tell people don't add more than one pound of soda ash at a time, okay? Let it do its job, let it clear up, and then test your chemistry again and see where your pH is. If it's still low, repeat the process, add another pound, okay? And keep doing that until your pH gets where you want it to be, okay? Now, let's say your pH is high, okay? So that means that you don't have a very acidic pool, all right? If it's high, you're going to want to use muriatic acid to reduce the pH, okay? Now I use it, I get them in these, in these refillable jugs, um, but you can get these at any pool supply store, probably not these. Okay, see so it says muriatic acid, notice it says danger poison. Be careful of any pool chemi chemical and do not mix them together and then add them to a pool, okay? Once you put them in the pool, they're gonna mix together and that's okay. You can add them almost at the same time or one right after the other, but don't mix them in a bucket or something together and then dump them in the pool because you might be making something that's dangerous if possibly explosive, okay? So what I do, this is a gallon jug, I will add one to two quarts of muriatic acid, depending on how high it is, how high the uh, pH is, and I'll add that Again, walking around the perimeter of the pool, careful that when it splashes, it might splash on your ankles or something. It is acid and it can itch, okay? So you might wanna flush it off. Just be careful when you pour it in the pool, okay? Walking around the perimeter of the pool with the equipment running, right? With a pump running so that helps disperse it, okay? And it'll distribute into the pool and you're good to go. And again, usually if you're not too high in your pH, one quart will, will make the difference. At the most, don't add more than two quarts at a time. And again, same thing with the soda ash is if you were trying to bring the pH up, let the equipment run, let the pool run for a couple hours, test your pH again, and if it's where it needs to be, you're good to go. If not, repeat the process, but don't overload it, okay? I'd rather have you do a little bit than too much. So again, remember this, some people are like, well, how soon after I'm done adding these chemicals can we swim safely? Well, it actually, if you just did a quart of this or a pound of the soda ash, on the soda ash, you probably wanna let it completely, the cloudiness go away, and that usually takes an hour or two, okay? If it is the acid and you just add a quart, typically you could probably jump in the pool right away, but if you do two quarts and if you're a little concerned, then wait a couple hours with the equipment running and then you're probably safe to swim, alrighty? Cool. So remember, the muriatic acid is to lower the pH and the soda ash is to raise the pH. Alrighty? Cool. So gang, that is my video on how to test and adjust the pH of your pool water. I hope it made sense. If you have any questions or comments, remember you can always put them in the comment section below this video or if you want, you can email me and my email address, as always, and it'll come across the bottom of the screen, is kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Once again, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Remember, because I get so many emails and comments, I literally get over a thousand a month during the summer, and we are in summer right now. Uh, it's very hard for me to get back to them. If you want priority 
response time, and you want to check out some really, really cool tools that will help you save even more money servicing your pool, please check out my membership website, PoolSchooler.com. Com. Alrighty. So once again, I hope that made sense. Remind you to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, remember, it's summertime, and like I said, it's going to be 117 degrees today. So remember to stay hydrated. And until we meet again, remember, have fun, be safe, and always, always, always watch those kids and elderly folk and pets around water. And I will see you next time. Take care.